The next page in our taco manual takes us to the iconic tacos al pastor. I know you've all seen them. They're done on a vertical spit with layers of marinated pork. They're charred on the outside. The charred pork is sliced off and made into tacos. Well, that is beyond what most people could even think about doing in their home. So I'm going to show you the easiest way to get to the flavor of Tacos al Pastor at home. And the first thing that we have to do is to make a special variation on the red chili adobo marinade that is so common in Mexico. And I'm going to show you two different ways in. If you are really comfortable with uh, ancho chiles, the dried ancho chiles, then I suggest you start with that because it'll give you the lightest and brightest flavor. Of course, when you're working with ancho chiles, you have to open them up pull out the stem end of it, dump the seeds out, and these should be quite pliable. If yours are not pliable, it means that they're a little old and they won't have as much flavor. And then you just tear your chile ancho into flat pieces. I've got five of them already done over here. I'll clean up the board here and we'll continue on because we need to toast and soak these guys. So it's adding another step in the process of making this. If you want to avoid all of this, then I'm going to ask you to work with ancho powder. Um, this is about a half a cup or two ounces of the ancho powder. I'm going to show you how to work with that too. But before we finish, um, the, or before we get to the place where we can actually soak this, I'm going to just lay some of these ancho chiles into an ungreased skillet. It's just a dry skillet here. Use a, a spatula um, that like a metal spatula here to press them down and start toasting them. So we're doing this over about a medium heat here um, and it'll take about a minute or so. Sometimes if your pan is quite hot, it'll take less time than that. But I'm using my nose to detect this beautiful toasty dried chili aroma, but I'm also using my eyes to see when they're ready here. So as I press these down on the inside, they will turn to a lighter color like that. That says that they're toasted, but they should smell beautifully aromatic at this point. Okay, so there's a one batch of them there, and I've got one more batch before we cover them with hot tap water. So I'm going to lay these guys right in here and then press them. The pan again is medium hot. You don't want to get it too hot or they will blister. But the pan has gotten a little bit hotter recently here. So this toasting is going to go faster than our initial one did. I can smell that beautiful toasted chili aroma. Scoop them in. I'm going to take them to the sink and do hot tap water on them and then once they're covered I'll just put a small plate there press it down to keep them submerged so that they will evenly rehydrate now if you're using the ancho powder here now this is not chili powder okay chili powder has salt and sugar and spices and so forth in it and so I'm going to rehydrate this pure chili powder um, very quickly with a cup and a quarter of uh, boiling water so there we've got our cup and a quarter I'm going to put it into this blender jar here and then the water, put the top on that, and then I'm going to put the top on, but, but I'm going to release this central set, uh, plug in the middle here because you don't want to trap all that hot steam in there. It'll blow the top right off. So then I just put a, a towel over the top and blend it just to, to mix. 
doesn't take much time. Now, while the, that is cooling off some, while our chili pods are roasting here, I'm going to also roast some garlic. I have eight uh, nice looking um, uh, dientes de ajo, as they would say in Spanish, cloves of garlic. Um, and I'm putting it in the same pan, ungreased, uh, over medium heat. And I'm going to turn these for, it'll take around 15 minutes. And all this will come out at the same time, basically. But I want these to be completely soft on the inside. They will have a little black blotchiness on the outside. But that's what we're looking for, is that beautiful roasted flavor. Garlic is roasted. I have rehydrated the ancho chiles. We've got our chile powder um, that has been reconstituted with boiling water cooled down now. But I'm going to show you this last step with the chili pods. Um, I'm going to put these guys in here with a little bit of their soaking liquid like it's about half of their soaking liquid there and then we're going to make a puree out of these guys so put those back up here on the blender and we will start that and we're going to let this go until it is as smooth a puree as we can get it this has stalled a little bit it's not going through the blades so i'm going to put a little bit more of our soaking liquid in there that, and then continue to blend until it gets really smooth okay. so there you have it the reconstituted powdered ancho chili or the reconstituted and blended chile puree from the chile pods now i'm going to choose to just work with one of these bases that we've created here and i'm going to work with the one that's made from the chili pods and we are going to turn that into the really classic red chili adobo that's used for marinades on all kinds of things in mexico um, that always has a variety of spices in it i have here a quarter teaspoon of cumin and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper a whole teaspoon of mexican oregano i'm just going to dump all of that together here and give it a very quick crush this is the molcajete i love having a small molcajete you can't really make salsa in it but it's great for grinding dried spices like this it's a kind of too small for salsa um, so i like to use it for grinding these kinds of things okay so i think i'm pretty well done there i'm going to use a little brush i always keep beside this so that i can scrape everything in here we have uh, a half a teaspoon now of mexican cinnamon i usually grind that in an electric spice grinder and then i keep a little half jar of it ground at all times so i'm going to put the half teaspoon of that in there so those are our four, sp five, four spices that go in there. And then I'm going to add to that a quarter of a cup of vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar. You could use any kind of vinegar really that you want for this. We're just looking for some nice acidity. And then I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of salt to it. Remember, this is a marinade, so it's heavily seasoned. Um, and we're going to blend that and that will give us now the classic red chili adobo except of course i forgot all of the roasted garlic so we got to throw the roasted garlic in there i've peeled it i left one to show you once it's cooled down the peel will come right off of it like that that papery skin will come right off of it so we'll put that in there and then I have noticed also that some of my black pepper looks like it didn't want to go down in there. So I'm going to just scrape it down in there and then put the top on and again, blend it until it's as smooth as I can get it. Now, if you have a high speed blender, this will look velvety. If you have a regular standard issue kind of blender, you might notice some of the chili skins in there. 
I would push it through a sort of medium mesh sieve just to catch those skins um, and give it that really velvety texture, but I don't really have to do that with this. Okay, so I'm going to take half of this, okay? So I am coming to a right around two cups there. So I'm going to take about a cup of it out of this blender jar. I think I've got that about right there. And we're going to turn this other half of it now into a very special adobo that is for making the tacos al pastor and that changes in a couple of ways one is that if you're like in mexico city um, a lot of people will they you can just use this one the way that it is but a lot of people would put a little bit of achiote when you go to the mexican grocery store this is the achiote package that you're going to be looking for so we've got about a half of one of those containers and i'm just going to break it up and put it in here you'll notice that it's a very it dyes food really and your fingers really um, a lot. So I tear that up and I put that in there. I'm going to want um, just about a tablespoon. I like to put this in there. About a tablespoon of agave syrup. You could use corn syrup. You could use honey for this. But this will make the, the marinade brown the meat a little bit better. So I like to put about a tablespoon of it in there. But I'm not sure I got a tablespoon. So I'm going to just do a little bit more there. And then the last unusual ingredient for this, well, I, I could say a not so unusual ingredient that we're going to use for this is to put a quarter of a cup of oil. You could use regular vegetable oil. Um, I'm using some good olive oil because I like the flavor of it in this but the last thing is going to be our pineapple uh, pineapple is a part of tacos al pastor everywhere um, i like to put a little bit of it in the marinade when we're working with this red chili adobo this classic red chili adobo customize it for tacos al pastor uh, by blending in a little bit of pineapple as well so i'm going to take the top and bottom off of this pineapple and cut it now into quarters. Um, and then we're gonna use about a quarter of this for making this preparation. Not for the, all of it for the adobo, most of it not for the adobo. Um, I like to cut the, the core out like that. And when you go to the places where they have the beautiful field ripened pineapples, you will notice that their cores are very, very tender. But most of what we get in the United States is not. The cores are not tender at all. Um, I don't cut a whole lot of the edge off of this. Um, a lot of people will cut real deeply into it. Um, but I do it sort of a, a light one. And then I go back and cut the little eyes out of here. So um, the, you can just use the tip of a knife to kind of go down in there and cut those guys out. Okay, clean up our little mess here. And then one slice off of this here is gonna go into the adobo. We're ready to blend this again until it is all incorporated. This piece we are going to cut in half inch slices. And then we will grill or pan sear that along with the pork. That brings us to the pork. This is pork shoulder roast. So I have about a pound and a half of it. And I'm going to slice this. If you don't feel comfortable slicing, you can usually buy thin pork steaks. Um, also cut from the same pork shoulder, so it'd be a pork shoulder steak. You could buy something like that, and then it's probably going to be too thick, and you're probably going to need to pound it a little bit to get it a little bit thinner. So you're trading off one thing for another. I'm going to cut mine up here. Just take it off of that. And I'm going to cut crosswise strips that are about, they're going to look sort of like short pieces of bacon. Um, and they're going to be about a quarter of an inch thick. 
Okay, that's all done. I'll just move this to the side here. I had it, a little piece of damp paper towel there just to keep that flexible cutting board in place. And we'll put this here. And we're gonna lay these guys out tightly and then brush them with our special marinade on both sides. Okay, now at home you can finish your al pastor taco meat in two ways. You could finish it either on the grill, which is my preferred way of doing it, or in a hot skillet. I'm going to show you both ways. So grill or heavy skillet, I got my 12 inch cast iron skillet. I actually have it sitting here over this grill, pretend it's on a burner in the house, but I just wanted to show you this sort of side by side here. The first thing that I'm going to do is to spray about half of the meat, cause I'm gonna cook half of it on the grill uh, with some oil and put a little coating, a light coating of oil in this hot skillet here. Um, that's for the second half of the meat. And I am going to, the stuff that I didn't grill, I mean, I didn't spray with oil, I'm just gonna lay here in the pan. The other part of it will go on the grill and we will grill, it doesn't take very long for any of this. That looks so beautiful. It smells so beautiful. I wish you could smell it. Now with the pineapple here, um, I put it all in the skillet because this was ready first. So you can sear your pineapple in the skillet if you want, or you could grill it. If you're gonna grill it, then my suggestion is that you lightly spray it with oil before you put it on the grill. But you can see they're gorgeous seared ones here in the skillet. Now I'm working with a hot grill and a hot pan, okay? That's really essential if you wanna get this beautiful end result that will just make everybody's mouth water. Now let's go on to the making of the tacos. This is what I'm sure all of you have been waiting for. I know it's what I have been waiting for. So I'm gonna cut up some of the meat. I like to just cut crosswise, leaving it in slightly longer pieces. Of course, when you eat it in Mexico, it's usually in slightly smaller pieces than this, at least lengthwise. If you want to, you could run your knife down like that. I'll take one of these pieces of seared pineapple cut that crosswise and then into small pieces. We've got some onions and cilantro here, a chopped white onion that has been rinsed and then mixed with uh, chopped cilantro. Warm corn tortillas, of course, which are a must for these beautiful al pastor style tacos, even though they're not done on the big spit. And so we'll put the meat down like that. I did forget one thing here, which is not, um, which is critical. And that is that we do need to put a little bit of salt on this meat here, top it off with some pineapple, which doesn't want to come up off of the board like that. Seared pineapple is just so good. Now we'll put on that onion and cilantro which is super classic in Mexico. I've got some chipotle salsa here to go over the top of it. And whether you like it or not, I'm not gonna wait another minute. I'm gonna have tacos al pastor. Mm -hmm. 